A new trailer for Star Wars Outlaws has been released a couple days ago, and this has led to a lot of controversy, you know, not to the trailer itself or the game, but more the pricing and the fact that Ubisoft is sort of getting away with this. What I'm referring to is that the game itself is pretty hefty in price. It's not just like a buy the game itself and that's it. No, there are different levels to buying it or to pre-order is what it is. Because at the end of the trailer, it was like, oh, here, here's the pre-order. You can pre-order it now. And so, that's what people did, or I'm assuming people did, and they're realizing the pricing of the game, or the, the special bonuses, the different levels of it, is pretty expensive. So I am looking at the image right now, I'm going to put on the screen right now, of the editions of the game. So you have the standard edition, which is basically the base game, and basically the pre-order bonus, which is just additional cosmetics. That's pretty standard, it's $70, that's pretty normal, no one is complaining about that, even though, yeah, you know, it is kind of expensive. That's sort of the normal of games nowadays for it to be that price, between $50 and $70, or even $80, that's normal. Things get more dicey with the Gold Edition, where you get the base game, the pre-order bonus, 3-day early access, and a season pass. Now, 3-day early access is kind of pointless, because what that is, basically, you get the game 3 days earlier from everyone else, which... Once the three days are up, it's kind of pointless, but maybe that's the point. It's, it's a fear of missing out this FOMO. And the season pass, from what I can tell, is that the starting this gold edition onwards, it's basically additional content. Like, you're getting bonus DLC with, like, like playable DLC. Like, it's, there's, like, a Java mission that you cannot play normally in this standard edition, which is kind of scummy, because, like, that's, you're locking the game, or certain parts of the gameplay behind a paywall. And it gets even worse with the Ultimate Edition, as you get everything I said before, but you get the Rogue Infantry Bundle, you get the Sabak Shark Bundle, and a digital art book. It's standard for games to have a art book with all the concept art and, you know, whatnot. That's something that people have for collection, but there's no physical copy of it. It's only the digital, because it's kind of pointless to buy that, the, the $130. I haven't even mentioned the pricing yet. It's $130, and the gold edition is $109 or $110. That's just without taxes, because in today's economy, <laughs> that, that's not showing taxes, which uh, is it's way more than that, probably, I bet. You know, which is horrible. It's just, why would I spend $130 on a game that I haven't even played yet? Because for me, why would I bother spending this money on a game that I don't have interest in? I mean, like, for me, I'm just gonna buy the standard edition. I'm just gonna get that base game, and if I really like it, then I'll probably upgrade. If I do like it, if I'm really dedicated to the game, and like, I want the content. But, like, spending this much money on this stuff. To me, this is pointless. The reason I'm buying the game is, well, one, for this channel, I have a ranking series. I have to rank everything Star Wars, so I have to do that. But also, for the sake of the lore, you know, the story, because, you know, the time period interests me. It's like, for me, it's, it's because it's Star Wars, and it's taking place in an interesting time period in, in universe, and it's about crime, about the underworld, that interests me. Now, the gameplay can be absolutely terrible. And that's why I'm saying, why buy so much more, I like, more money. Why spend more money on it if I don't know if the game's gonna be good or not? And so, because most likely we get this game on the day it releases or around that time. So I'm not, I don't know if I'm gonna pre-order this, <laughs> but in terms of getting the game around time, it's kind of difficult for people to get, sort of give a good review on it because it's when you get first impressions. And so, you know, I don't want that to discourage me from getting the game or delaying that purchase. I mean, I'm gonna probably get the game as quickly as I could possibly get to then start playing it and then finish it to make a review on it for the channel. So, but for most people, it is absurd. For like the casual people or the casual audience, that's probably a deterrent from getting this game because with all the trailers, it's looking pretty good. The pricing and all the, the bonus stuff, locking content behind a paid DLC, Gameplay-wise, it's really scummy, and even EA does not do that. Like, most people think EA is a scummy company, which, which they are, but in terms of Star Wars, they have learned their lesson. Battlefront 2 does not have microtransactions. You know, the 2017 one does not have any micro microtransactions. People think that still does, it doesn't. And when Fallen Order came out, that was a breath of fresh air, because it has no... It doesn't have that, like... 
And that engine Fallen Order had the same crap that Outlaws is having. <laughs> no, like, that would tarnish the reputation of the game. Like, Fallen Order and Survivor are pretty beloved games. And it seems like it's going to be the same with the third game when it has to come out. Like, the perfect Star Wars modern gaming trilogy. That, I don't, I don't think it's going to be the case with Outlaws because of this controversy of, like, you have to spend more money to unlock more content, which is scummy. And it seems kind of pointless because, like I said, I don't know what the game's going to be like because they can show as much gameplay as they want. That's on their computers. What about my Xbox? How's it going to run on my Xbox? How's the frame going to work? That's something that most games struggle with nowadays. Even Jedi Survivor, even though I praised it as like everyone loving it, when it came out, it had a horrible launch on PC. It just didn't run properly on PCs. And it, har it tarnished the reputation of Jedi Survivor for PC users. For you know console users, it was fine or whatever, but for Outlaws, I'm predicting that people are going to be pissed at the game when it comes out. People are already mad at it. That's why I'm even making this video. It's so, so much controversy surrounding this game. And a lot of it is kind of stupid, but, you know, rightfully so when it comes to the pricing. Like, this, that aspect that I'm talking about here. Rightfully so, people should be upset. Because, like I said, why would I spend $130 on a game that I have never played before or have no interest in necessarily. Like if it was like if I was not a Star Wars fan and just a casual gamer that doesn't that doesn't care about Star Wars or like the the Star Wars gaming scene, why would I spend 130 dollars on this? And I'm gonna wrap it up there because that's all I have to say on that. Do you think that this controversy or this drama is rightfully deserved? Are you gonna spend the full 130 dollars on this game? Comment down below because I'm gonna go now. So. Goodbye, everyone.